Hi guys, it's uh, Mr. Cousins again and Mrs. Tom. Hi there. How are we doing? Uh, this week uh, we are going to show you a few different dishes. Okay. Now I'm going to, from last week, show you how to make bolognese. All right. So what I've done is this was frozen last week. Okay. Um, now I've got it out of the fridge. So remember when you get sorry out of the freezer. So remember when you defrost something, you can never refreeze it. Okay. Once this is heated up, it has to be eaten. All right, so once the lasagna is made, what with your leftovers, it has to be eaten then and it can't be reheated again, okay? Remember that from your hygiene and safety. All right, so first of all, what I'm gonna make, because obviously lasagna, we've got the mince there, which is all done, the bolognese, but we now need to make a roux sauce or cheese sauce, okay? One of the best parts, I think. So what I've got is, I've got the hob on there already. I've got it around about three or four doesn't have to be really, really high. So first of all, what I need to do is I need to measure my liquid out. Now my liquid is some milk. Now the easiest way to work this sauce out, okay, depending on how much you need, all right, is I'm gonna use 500 mils of milk, okay? Now I've already pre-weighed 50 grams, okay, of fat, so butter, okay, or margarine, and 50 grams of flour, right? So the easiest way to think of it is 500 mils for the liquid, but the dry stock, you just take a zero off. And then, it, so you could do 300 mils of liquid, and then you do 30 and 30, all right? Or 250, 25, 25, depending on how much you need. Now for a family of four, I would say go 500, all right, if you're making a big lasagna, all right? Or if you want it. So what we're gonna do as well, is this sauce is used for macaroni cheese. I'm also going to make a macaroni cheese and show you how to do that with the same sauce. So, let's fire away. I've got a jug here. Now, remember, I'm not going to stand here and pour like this. I want a level amount. Okay, so I'm going to use eye level test, remember. And my half a litre, 500 ml is here, so it's on a, a flat surface. And I'm just going to pour my liquid in. Okay. And there you go, 500 ml. All right, now my pan should be nice and hot there. Just check that, yeah, it's nice and warm. I'm going to pour the milk straight in. Now, what I'm then going to do, I'm going to literally just put in my flour and butter. All right, now this method is called the all in one method. All right. Now what you have to do is you cannot keep this still. You've got to keep stirring it, all right? Because if you leave it, okay, you are going to get lots and lots of lumps. Now at the minute, there are a few little lumps in there, okay? Now this process is called gelatinization. And what happens is basically the starch in the flour, okay, it basically expands as it heats up, and that's what thickens the sauce up. So once it heats up, Okay, those starch molecules start to expand and each one, okay, they, they, they then burst and then they thicken the sauce up. Now, if I don't stir this constantly, what's going to happen is, is I'm just going to, it's going to stick to the pan, so it's going to stick to the bottom, all those molecules are just going to sit at the bottom and it's going to burn, okay? And also, what's going to happen is, is you're just going to get a big lump, okay? Lots of different lumps, you've got to keep it stirring. Now, this is going to take me, probably around about sort of five minutes, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep stirring, because you don't wanna watch me stirring for five minutes, and I'm gonna pass you over to Mrs. Tom. Hi, you kids. Right, what we're gonna do again today, we're gonna to utilize and use up serve bolognese from last week, and we're gonna make a pizza. People worry about dough, dough is so easy. Bread's the easiest thing, so I've pre-weighed 25 grams of fat, and 200 is strong bread flour. Strong bread flour has a higher gluten content and that makes your bread stretchy. So you need that to make bread. I put that in there, I've also added some salt. Clean fingers, hold the fingers. Rub that. Yeah, it's very little fat in there, but it just needs to be cold. Oh, and this is just going to enrich your bread. Practically there. 
Now I could make this healthier because this is strong white bread flour. I could use wholemeal and that's more fibre, much better for you. That's about it. To check, you shake your bowl and your lumps will come to the top. Now to make your bread rise, you need something called yeast. I'm using dry yeast and it's fast action. So, throw your way down, in this little bag. Okay, then. I need 125 ml of tepid water. Now, tepid water isn't hot and it's not cold. It's if you put your finger in, you kind of don't feel that you're in water. If you put it too hot, it'll kill the yeast. Cold, it'll just take longer. So, one, two, five. Still have a little bit. Mix that to then I'm going to add that little bit. That's a vitamin C tablet. And all that's going to do is speed this whole process up. Okay, so put it on a big spoon, squash it. Add it in the water, stir it around, straighten it out. Now, dough would rather be rough than dry. So, give it a quick mix. Pulling it together, and it looks kind of a little bit like porridge. But that's how it should look. Okay, so. That's it. Perfect. Put this out of the way. Put that straight on the bench. And we start something called kneading, right? When I'm, I'm kneading it, and I'm strengthening the gluten fry. And all that's going to do is make your bread soft, springy, so you can be as rough as you want with it. And stretching, pull it. Stretching, pull it. When it starts to stick, clean a little bit down. Stretch. We're going to do that for about 10-15 minutes and that's going to, you'll feel it'll go warm and you'll feel it'll, it'll just go stretchy and if you pull it you can see, you'll see it goes kind of like this. Okay, now that's going to take 15 minutes and we haven't really got that 10. So, yeah, so that's a good idea. So that's how it should end up. If I'm going to shape that now into a pizza base, if I wanted to make bread, I'll do another process. Now don't forget, I've kneaded. The next process is called proving. The proving makes it right. Don't need to do that with this because it's a pizza base. So, small tin. Grease around the sides. Just a little bit. That's perfect. And that's now ready for making the base. You ready for the Yes. Okay. Uh, right guys, we've been stirring this for about five minutes. I'm just going to show you, you can see now, that sauce, okay, is a lot bigger than it was before. Remember, the sauce, literally the liquid was just milk. Okay, flour and butter. Okay, so that has started to, all of the molecules to start to pop and it start to thick up, thick, sorry, thick enough. Now you can see that's a lot thicker than it was. Okay, now we need to keep stirring that for a few more minutes, okay, and I'm just going to put the heat up a tiny little bit, one more box. I've turned it from three to four, okay, because what I want to do is I want to just get this to thicken up a little bit more. So remember, I was telling you about it's a process called gelatinization. Alright? So all those molecules, those starch molecules, okay, in the flour have now burst. Alright? But the higher you put the heat up, alright, the more the more vigorous and the more they're gonna burst even more. Okay, so it's gonna thicken the sauce up even more. Now we want quite a thick sauce, but not too thick. Best way to imagine it is if the sauce can coat the back of the spoon. 
All right. What else I'm going to add to this? I'm going to add some cheese. All right. Now, again, remember, we want to make this healthy, but you have to have a balanced diet. Okay. And you know, fat and cheese is part of balanced diet. Calcium um, in it, and it's got protein also. Now you can see from this that that has thickened up a lot more even than it was before. Okay. What we're going to do with this, we're going to make macaroni cheese and we're also going to use the sauce for bolognese, for the lasagna. Okay, so that's really nice and thick. Now before you add cheese, you need to take it off the heat. This is really, really important. Okay, you need to take it off the heat because the water and the fat, okay, is going to make it, 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 it it's not going to, it, <laughs> it's well, is it because the cheese is a third fat, a third water, and a third protein? Thank you, Mrs. Tom. Thank you very much. Okay, so basically, we put some cheese in, cans are clean. Take it off the heat. Do you know what's concerned about how much cheese I'm having to say? Because a really hard fat food. Could I add fondant? Because with that being a stronger cheese, I'd need a smaller amount. Yes, you could, yeah. I mean, this is an extra mature cheese as well, so it's it's a, a lot, but it's obviously going over three different dishes. Yeah. Um, so I've put about sort of 40 grams of cheese in there, okay? Because I had 80 grams in there and that was half of it, okay? So I've put 40 grams, and what I've done is remember I'm making two lasagnas, okay? and I'm making one macaroni and cheese. So I'm gonna use a little bit of cheese for the top of each of those, which is why I've got some left over. All right, so now you can see that, if you take a look, that is lovely and thick. Now, it's not lumps in there, that's just the cheese that hasn't melted yet. But we're gonna turn the heat off, and I'm just gonna stir that. And I'm gonna leave that for a minute, and we'll come over here. All right, so first of all, out of the way. What we're going to do, we're going to fill the lasagna. Now I've already cut the lasagna sheets down. Now when you're doing it at home, you'll probably have a bigger dish than this. All right? Buy lasagna sheets, 39 pence for a packet of Aldi. All right? Really cheap. I've got a layer of lasagna sheet at the bottom. And I'm going to put a layer of sauce. Remember this is the bolognese that I made last week. A layer of sauce and then I've got a layer of pasta again. Now I'm not putting, a lot of people do put the, the cheese sauce on the top. Okay, but remember, uh, sorry, on each layer, but what I tend to do is I just tend to put it on the top so there's less of it. Um, and I also I need to make the macaroni cheese as well. So I do that. And I'm gonna put another layer there. I do have some more bolognese, but I'm just gonna make the one at the moment just to show you, and then I'm gonna show you how to make the macaroni. So that's your layers, okay? And then what I'm going to do, let's go back to the sauce there. Now you can see that the sauce is lovely, okay, and silky smooth. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use, literally pour the sauce over the top. Alright, over. Clean hands. So a bit of cheese on top. And on the bacon. That's ready to go. Now for the for the macaroni. Okay, I've got, here, yeah, I've got 50 grams of 
pasta. Now this is 50 grams of dry pasta. So whenever you're cooking for anybody, if you weigh out 50 grams per portion, so per person, so for four people you'd weigh out 200 grams. You put it into a pan, okay, and you make sure it's covered by about an inch above the pasta with a bit of salt, okay, and you boil that for about 10 to 15 minutes. It doesn't matter, okay, if it's not, it, it's something called al dente where it's got a bit of a bite to it, okay, because you're, oh, you're going to put this in the oven and you're going to finish it off in the oven, which will cook it in the sauce anyway, all right? You don't want to overcook pasta because it becomes become slimy and sloppy, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to separate a bit of this sauce because I haven't made a bit of that lasagna yet, okay? I'm not going to obviously put all of this cheese sauce on here because I've got quite a bit there. Alright, so I'm going to pour a little bit into here. Just to keep that for separate. Okay, don't worry about this. It's just something I'm doing that I need to keep it separate. And then what I'm going to do is get rid of this. Don't need it now. And I'm just going to pour the pasta into the sauce. Okay, now there's a lot more sauce to pasta there, don't worry about it. Obviously you would probably put about 200 grams of pasta in there. Okay, so that is now a macaroni and cheese. What I'm going to do, is I'm just going to pour this in here. Now obviously some people like a lot of sauce, some people don't. Okay, probably put a lot more pasta in there. And then again, a little bit of cheese. Okay, not too much. And then there you have one lasagna on that rolling really cheese. Okay? Are you ready then, yeah, Tom? Yeah. Right, door's perfect there. It's, I'm going to roll it out into the shape. Right there. Teeny little bit of flour, just a little bit because too much flour dries it out. Right? Now this has gluten in it. Gluten fights against you because it's stretchy. So when I roll it, roll it out, then it's automatic and it's straight back into shape. Put a little bit of flour on there. Turn it. See how it's just shrinking back through? I wish I could let so feel it because it feels really soft and warm. And the perfect door. Now this is exactly what you need bread ones. But you would let it prove a few minutes first and it would rise because all the gases would make it rise up. So that's about it. So we just want a small one in the container. And it goes and just with your fingers. Stretch it down. Perfect. What you could do, you could add some cheese on there, you could add some herbs, you could have tomatoes, you could do anything. But what we're doing, we're utilising, we're going to utilise or use up that same year last week because it's been frozen. So, the bolognese on. Spread it around a little bit. There's plenty on there. And then, just because we want to add a few little bits, we've got some onion out of the earlier. Earlier, really good for you. So just bring out a few little bits of that. Maybe let's put a few little rings. And then finish it off. With some cheese, just a little bit. If you want, you can make it quite fancy and do your edges, but we're not going to. Perfect. We've got pizza there, but we also want some wedges. We want healthy chips. So for a table, I slice them into small slivers. Kept the skin on because we want the fibre. Got my commander. Spread it 
spray with a little bit of oil, or if you haven't got this one curl oil, any kind of oil, just a teeny little bit. In the oven, 25 minutes, we have a pizza and wedges. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to obviously everybody makes a bit of garlic bread. Here, I'm going to put a little bit of oil, same process. You can also do this on a bigger baking tray and sort of stretch it right out. I do it a little bit different than Mrs. Tom. Okay, so what I do is I just pull around and stretch. It's two different ways to do it. I'm not going to spin it, so don't expect this to. That's why I didn't do okay. that, because the kids do that and drop that. So, I'm going to place that in here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to push okay, towards the edges. Now don't worry, I'm going to show you this on purpose. If it's split, watch, it's really stretchy the door. You can just cover the holes up, so if you get a really gaping hole like that, because it's got loads of gluten in, okay, and it's really stretchy, you can actually just patch it back up, it doesn't matter. Alright, so don't think, ah, oh, I've split it, it's, it's broke, it's not going to work. It's fine, you're just literally using your fingers, okay? Now, I can push with my fingers up here, because there's quite a bit of dough on the edges. I'm literally going to use my fingers and go all the way around. See that? Okay. And there, I'm going to make pizza pie. Alright, but instead of it being a pizza, what I've got here, I've got some butter or spread. Some garlic, okay, and some parsley, dried parsley. All right, and to that, I'm just going to take the back of my spoon, okay, not as much as that, very strong, and then I'm literally just going to use the back of my spoon and spread it around. Now I'm going to get a little bit more, because I like quite a bit of garlic, okay, and spread it around. More. And then again, just in there, I'm going to get under, naughty, but I will use the tea towel. And I'm just going to put it in there about 10 minutes, okay? And that will be done. So if you want to come back once everything's cooked, we will show you the results. Okay, uh, right, I'm just going to show you there, guys. Um, so we have Always remember as well, um, when you are putting things in the oven, please use oven gloves, all right? Um, you must use oven gloves or a very, very thick doubled over tea towel if you don't have oven gloves or an oven mitt, okay? Please never take anything out of the oven um, without anything on your hands. Uh, so what we've got here, we've got Mrs. Tom's Pizza. Um, we did make a um, sort of garlic bread, one of them, without um, cheese on. Um, it's a little bit flat, alright, didn't turn out as well as I'd like, but that's cooking for you. This one's a bit better, I've done this one with um, cheese and leftover bechamel sauce, okay, the, the root sauce that we had before. Um, I've then got um, some wedges here, probably do with a little bit of salt on. Okay, so I've got some wedges there, I've got some lasagna. A little bit of lasagna. Very hot here, so I'm just not going to burn my hands. There we go, a bit of lasagna. And I'm just going to push Obviously, you probably not have all this together. I think the long stuff is going to tuck into this afterwards. There's uh, some macaroni cheese. And one of my favourites, okay, on this pizza. So, what I'm going to do is this is nice and cool now, okay, so I can touch this. All right, I'm going to cut this in quarters. 
obviously I've washed my hands also. Pizza and try to do a stuffed crust with the rest of the Bechamel sauce. It eased out, it doesn't matter, it still, still tastes good. Got a bit of that as well. Obviously we don't want to waste anything. And obviously you wouldn't have this much carbohydrates on one plate. But, I'm just going to show you them all there. Okay, so we've got plain garlic bread, blue sauce garlic bread, macaroni cheese, wedges or chips, bolognese pizza made with leftover bolognese, and we also have a lasagna there made with the leftover bolognese and obviously the roux sauce, okay? Uh, it's a you made called roux sauce or bechamel sauce. And then obviously we've got another cheese garlic bread, but I'm not gonna put any more on there, okay? Um, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and the recipes will be on there, the, the sort of measurements and things. Um, we've obviously shown you how to do it, so the measurements of how much you need will be on the video, all right? Please remember to be safe when you're cooking and always have an adult and um, we'll put a poster on to show you uh, things to be safe. Okay, thank you very much. Take care now. This is Tom. Bye. See you next week.